our first talk of this afternoon. Uh, do you want to come? So the, the title of the talk uh, is called Entanglement Renormalization Circuit of Cairo Topo uh, Topological Order. And this, called, this talk was de delivered by Guang Yu Zhu. Let's welcome him. Uh, and the Joint Quantum Institute. Uh, so Su Kuan was, was the, uh, the first author of this paper, and uh, uh, he could not attend the conference due to visa issue. So uh, instead, I'm presenting this work. Um, also, just as an advertisement, Su Kuan is uh, currently looking for postdoc position. Uh, he's very good at both uh, condensed matter physics and the quantum information. Uh, so the take home message uh, of this talk is that uh, we construct an uh, entanglement renormalization circuit for chiral spin liquid, which falls uh, into the Kitaev 16 fold uh, weight classification. Um, and uh, in particular, this entanglement circuit, we call it uh, a MARA with quasi local evolution, uh, or uh, in short, MARAPO. Uh, so, Sukhan gave this uh, fantastic name to this circuit. Uh, and it also depends our understanding of quantum, the quantum complexity and entangled structure of quantum many-body states. So here is the outline of this talk. Uh, so I'm beginning with the uh, introduction to the entanglement renormalization. Uh, so uh, in physics, uh, we all, always uh, talk about the entanglement of a quantum many-body system. So sometimes we say certain state is uh, uh, less entangled and some other states are highly entangled, so uh, what do we really mean by that? So in order uh, to give an operational definition of the entangled structure, we can consider the following uh, uh, process that we uh, start with a product state, um, trivial product state, and uh, feed it into a quantum circuit, and then, then we produce uh, some target state. Um, Uh, state preparation uh, for actual experiments, uh, such as quantum simulation or quantum engineering. Now also it uh, helps understand the quantum complexity of these states. In particular, it can relate the uh, complexity of the many-body state with the complexity of the quantum circuit. So typically we will consider a circuit with uh, local gates, such that it involves only a constant number of qubits. Uh, such as two qubit gates. Uh, so, and we consider, and the co complexity of the many body state can be uh, quantified with the depth of the quantum circuit. So, if the circuit has a constant depth, we say such a many body state uh, as trivial. Uh, in contrast, if it's not constant, it has some scaling with the system size, we say it is non trivial. We could also uh, put an additional constraint of a geometric locality, which is typical in physics that you consider um, finite dimensional, uh, 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 n-dimensional uh, lattice, and, uh, and such that these gates are in an order one neighborhood, uh, the support of the gates in uh, the geometry local with the uh, support is the order one neighborhood. And uh, that you can further uh, say this state is a so-called short range entangled state and if it's not constant, it's a long-range entangled, which are just a special case of a trivial and non-trivial states. Uh, now we want to introduce the um, MARA circuit, uh, uh, which is multi-scale entanglement and renormalization, and that's. Uh, and uh, here is an illustration of a, a 1D MARA. Uh, so it, it is uh, composed of gates with strictly uh, local gating in each layer. Um, okay. Um, so, for example, you can see this square represented two qubit gates uh, entangling these two uh, qubits here. And there, are, uh, typically in MARA, there are also um, isometries, which could, in principle, be a non unitary map that merge two qubits into one qubit. In this talk, we can consider an equivalent view that you 
also think it is a unitary gate such that it uh, disentangle some uh, qubit out as an ancillary qubit in um, particular state. Uh, uh, so in this circuit, all the gates are just uh, uh, three local gates, with, uh, and especially the, there are two qubit gates. And this uh, circuit uh, uh, translational invariant and also scale invariant looks the same at different scales. Um, so uh, we can understand this Mara circuit is that it's a uh, renormalization process from the uh, uh, ultraviolet limit, the so-called short wavelength limit in physics to the uh, in, uh, infrared limit, where it's, which is a long wavelength limit with, where you uh, ignore the uh, uh, lattice details. Uh, so it can be considered as a, a, a coarse graining of the lattice and then you can uh, effectively disentangling some ancillary qubits out uh, in, into some particular state. Here it's zero. Uh, and also you can reverse the direction of the circuit. Now it becomes uh, uh, exactly the circuit we talked before as uh, preparing some uh, non-trivial many-body states uh, from uh, the um, trivial product state. And then the output of the circuit, such a uh, invariant circuit, we call it uh, a fixed point wave function. Uh, which means uh, if you put another layer of a mirror circuit, the wave function will look exactly the same, except that it's in different landscape. Uh, so similarly, we can have a two-dimensional mirror that it's cost graining uh, grid instead of a, a 1D lattice. Uh, so, uh, and, and as the simplest example, we consider uh, the 2D uh, model Tori code, uh, which is uh, itself a quantum error correcting code, and also uh, the simplest uh, topological order, in fact, a Z2 topological order, which can also be interpreted as a Z2 lattice gauge theory, which we, we can see uh, why it is that later. Uh, so, so, it, it uh, has been figured out a long time ago that there is a simple mirror circuit uh, to uh, renormalize the Tori code. So, uh, here is the one step of the circuit that renormalizes the uh, uh, lattice um, in the x direction. But essentially, it merges two plaquettes uh, into a single plaquette. So, it calls for the lattice. And uh, the circuit is just composed of a, a one type of gates with C naught gates represented by these arrows, arrows, and they all commute with each other so they can be applied at the same time. And once you apply this circuit, you can see this uh, ancillary qubits represented by the white dots is disentangled out of the uh, many-body state. So the, the state becomes a, a tensor product of your many-body state uh, at a coarse grain scale uh, with the ancillary qubits um, in a particular state, either zero or plus. So uh, you could uh, then repeat this procedure uh, uh, similarly, you can do the cost screening in the y direction, and then you can do these circuits at different scales. And then the circuit is a translation invariant, so the gates look exactly the same. And then you could uh, uh, just cost screen the Tori code. Uh, now we want to uh, go to our central theme of this talk, which is uh, how to uh, understand the internal realization circuit for chiral topological order. So we start with uh, uh, the definition of uh, so-called chiral topological states. Uh, so typically, these states has the uh, these properties. They have uh, well-defined chiral central charge uh, and a chiral edge mode flow uh, in certain uh, direction, and also a thermal Hall conductance, which is uh, proportional to the chiral central charge, and it does not preserve time reversal symmetry because the current can flow uh, either clockwise, uh, counterclockwise, or clockwise. Uh, some well-known example of these chiral topological states, uh, uh, for example, the integer quantum Hall or fractional quantum Hall states, which has a Hall conductance uh, proportional to mu times e squared over h. Uh, so this mu could either be integer or fractional. And so in some cases, this mu is just also called uh, the Chern number. Uh, so there are some other examples. Uh, for example, the um, P plus IP topological superconductor uh, ICNT topological quantum field theory and the chiral spin liquids, they are also top, chiral topological states. So in particular, the, the, these three uh, type of states, um, which uh, 
they, uh, they, they are so-called intrinsic topological order. And uh, we defined in the beginning, they are non-trivial state or they have a long-range uh, entanglement. They, they are long-range entangled. Um, so the intrinsic topological order uh, can be uh, defined such as you, you can have a, a ground state degeneracy when you put the states on a torus or high genus surface. And it can have a quasi-particles carries uh, non-trivial fractional uh, braiding statistics. Uh, and I also have non-trivial topological entangled entropy. Uh, so in contrast, uh, these states, integer quantum Hall state of P plus IP topology, they don't have uh, intrinsic uh, topological order. So we always say they are topological phases or topological states, but these three, we call them topological order. So the big question is uh, uh, that we know that how to construct a scale invariant mirror circuit for uh, with strict local gates for wide class of exact slope models, known as the Levin one string line models, where the topical is a special example of them, uh, and they are now chiral. Uh, so, but the, the question is, can we find a scale invariant mirror circuits uh, with uh, strictly uh, local gates uh, for chiral topological order system? So, so the answer is hard and probably impossible. So. Uh, one can understand uh, why it's hard from the correlation length reduction argument, which is sort of a, a no-go argument. So we can define the correlation length of uh, many body states with this connected two-point correlation function with the, uh, where the operator are defi defined on different lattice sites. And it, it, while it decays exponentially, you can extract the length scale, which is the so-called correlation length. Uh, so now if we apply one step of the mirror circuit, uh, which uh, makes psi into psi prime, uh, uh, multiply this uh, unitary circuit U. Uh, so things we are doing cost screening. So the originally the state has, if the uh, two uh, sides with distance two are correlated, now uh, once cost screened, they only the, with distance one are now correlated. So. The correlation length is reduced by a factor of the uh, rescaling length, uh, this, uh, which is um, the B, and uh, in this example, it just equals to two. So, this, this, so yeah, so now you can see that, uh, so now if we want to find a, 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 a mirror that has a fixed point wave function, so th this fixed point wave function has to look exactly the same as the, uh, the old wave function before you apply one step of mirror. So the size prime uh, should have to equal to psi. Uh, so that will make uh, uh, this new um, correlation lens L prime uh, has to equal to the old correlation lens L. So then you have this equation that L has to equal to L divided by B. And if you solve this equation, there are only two possibilities. Either L is zero, uh, it has zero correlation length, or L equals to infinity. So in the later case, it is uh, corresponding to some gapless system where the correlation length could decay uh, as a power law instead of exponential. Uh, and we know chiral topological order are not gapless. In fact, they are uh, gapped. But it is also very hard to find uh, any chiral topological order with the zero correlation length. Uh, all the example we know, actually, have a finite correlation lens. That's why, that's why it seems to be impossible to find a, a, a mirror for chiral topology uh, and even for just a chiral topology state with, with no intrinsic topology order. So, so the question is, can we go beyond the, the conventional mirror uh, framework with strictly local and discrete gates? So, so the, the solution is we could consider so-called uh, quasi-local evolution. So instead of having the strict local gates, uh, we can consider a evolution, time evolution with certain Hamiltonian that it's a sum of terms. So each term is actually interaction with different uh, uh, range. Uh, so this, this is the illustration of that and also uh, this picture. Uh, so however, uh, this interaction at different range decays with super polynomially with the range, with the distance. Uh, super polynomial means it it's decays faster than any power law, but it still uh, decays uh, uh, slower than exponential uh, decaying functions. So that's why it's not a local evolution, but only a quasi-local evolution. 
Uh, so, so this is sort of a, the decaying profile of this kind of uh, interaction and evolution. So now we ca could consider first, instead of the chiral topological order, we apply uh, such quasi-local evolution uh, to a uh, chiral topological state with no intrinsic topological order. So we consider this example of P plus IP topological superconductor, which is defined with a non-interacting free fermion models consider of these uh, hopping terms uh, with coefficient t and uh, then also pairing term with the gap uh, delta and uh, there are additional chemical potential terms. Uh, so in certain parameter region at a uh, range at it's, uh, uh, P wave topological uh, superconductor. Um, and uh, so the ground state is just a Gaussian Fermion state. So, uh, and we know it's exact solvable and it is pretty uh, trivial, and uh, we know there is no intrinsic topological order. And here I put a quotation mark because actually it's, it's also not easy to find a, a, a strictly local constant depth circuit to prepare this state. Uh, so in fact, this state is a so-called invertible phase. Uh, the invert means you can always find a counterpart with, with opposite chirality, basically the P minus IP superconductor that effectively has a, a edge current in opposite direction. And if you take two copies of them, merge them, and you can find a, an ADF back pass uh, to connect to a uh, trivial state, a trivial product state. So, uh, and such, the existence of such adiabatic paths uh, means one can actually uh, prepare some constant uh, quasi-local evolution circuit uh, to prepare this phase. So, so it's, it's kind of a trivial uh, in this sense. And, and we, we can see why it is, uh, why, how you co to convert this adiabatic path to the constant depth uh, quasi-local evolution in the next few slides. Uh, so, um, and, uh, and so our, our main goal is now to uh, apply a, a entangled renormalization circuit to cross screen the lattice. So we want to basically disentangle these sides out, which means the fermion can now not hop to these sides. So you, you can do that by just uh, put a very uh, large, uh, uh, large negative chemical potential, which effectively creates a potential barrier to forbid the fermion to hop to that side. But uh, there's quantum tunneling effect, so the fermion still can hop to the next near neighbor side. So we can consider um, another new Hamiltonian which stabilizes the states uh, where there's uh, effectively no fermion uh, on these sides. So you can write a new wave function, a new Hamilton, parent Hamiltonian for these states. Um, so, and uh, there's a, it's interesting that we could just uh, uh, have a, find an adiabatic path to interpolate between the, your initial Hamiltonian and the final Hamiltonian, which is the parent Hamiltonian of the coarse green states. You can continuously tune this parameter and find, you find that the, nav, the gap never closed. In fact, there's always a gap. Uh, so in this uh, band structure, if you diagonalize this uh, free Fermi Hamiltonian. Uh, so this is kind of a miracle. Uh, so, however, the adiabatic evolution takes uh, infinite amount of time. So, but we can convert the adiabatic path to finite qua uh, time quasi-adiabatic circuit, which is the so-called uh, quasi-local evolution with uh, Hastings recipe. So, basically, you can define this so-called quasi-adiabatic continuation operator, uh, D lambda, and then you have an evolution with a, a, a constant time uh, with this uh, new operator, which is closely related to your uh, original Hamiltonian in your adiabatic pass. Uh, uh, so, and this operator can again be decomposed into a sum over interaction uh, with different range and it decays super polynomially. Okay, now, the, so we can repeat such procedure to uh, um, prepare uh, entanglement renormalization circuit for the uh, chiral uh, P plus IP topological superconductor. Um, so, but how to prepare uh, interacting chiral states with intrinsic chiral topological order? Uh, so that's our bigger uh, question. And now we construct an internal reverse circuit for so-called chiral spin liquids, which fall into QDF 16-fold way uh, classification. And the circuit is called a mirror with uh, quasi-local evolution, miracle. Uh, so now we want to uh, introduce 
uh, the chiral uh, spin liquid co construction. So we can cons uh, construct exact solvable chiral spin liquids, which have the uh, new interpretation of new layers of P plus IP topological superconductor coupled to uh, Z2 lattice gauge theory. This process is called uh, gauging and, uh, uh, and it falls into the 16-fold way classification. So the gauging, uh, so-called gauging, you can understand with two point viewpoints. One is you can turn the global symmetry into some local gauge symmetry, or terminally you can think you couple the system to a certain dynamical gauge field. So we start with the uh, P plus IP superconductor uh, model, and you can represent the same model with the Majorana operators, uh, defining in such way. And you can define the Fermion uh, parity operator with uh, this Marana operators, uh, and uh, you put it on the placate of the dual lattice of your original model. Uh, so now you want to gauge the fermion parity symmetry. You can do that um, by uh, couple this um, uh, Marana fermion to uh, gauge spins defined on the edges of the dual lattice, uh, so such that uh, the global parity uh, fermion parity symmetry, which is, is conserved and equal to one, uh, is uh, promoted into a uh, local gauge symmetry, which is a product of uh, the uh, fermion parity operator with the, uh, these gauge spins. And uh, they have to individually conserve. Uh, and you can think of this poly operator as just uh, uh, an exponential of the compact uh, uh, U1 gauge field. So it's a discrete version of this uh, uh, electro, uh, electro field and the uh, uh, vect magnetic vector potential. And, and now, uh, in order to make the original hopping term commute with this uh, um, Fermi, uh, uh, this conservation, uh, so you need to also couple the hopping term with the sigma x operator, such as com commute with this operator. And similarly, you do it vertically. And this um, Fermi parity, uh, so this um, local gauge symmetry is sometimes called the Gauss's law because it can exactly be interpreted in analog with the Gauss's law in the electric magnetic uh, uh, magnetism. Uh, so in addition, you also put uh, some uh, flux operator, which is a uh, four spin uh, term on the vertex to impose the zero flux constraint. So you don't uh, allow any flux on excitation uh, in this uh, uh, Z2 gauge theory. Uh, so once you impose that, you can, you, can, you can see that you can actually couple the fermi hopping term with a different path, and they, they are equivalent by multiplying this flux operator, which is like a Stokes Stoke theory in the uh, electromagnetism. Uh, so now the uh, Hamiltonian of the gauge P plus IP superconductor is just represented with the Marana operator and coupled to the, the spins in the Z2 gauge theory. And then you, can, you can impose uh, the Gauss's law and the zero flux constraint. In fact, you can also put them as energy penalty terms in, in this Hamiltonian to, uh, to impose them. Uh, so the ground state uh, wave function of this uh, new gauge Hamiltonian uh, actually has uh, this form, so we call it uh, a string entangled Fermi Gaussian state. So, so you start with the Fermi Gaussian state and the times the product of uh, all the gauge spin in the plus direction. Uh, so this term is a projector to make sure this Gaussian law is satisfied. So you start with uh, uh, this configuration, which is this picture, and then you can multiply uh, this uh, generator of this Gaussian law. So then you can prepare a superposition of uh, uh, different uh, uh, strings. So, so this string represented that the qubit is uh, flipped into the minus states. Uh, and uh, in addition of the um, string uh, multiplication, uh, uh, the, you also multiply the fer fermion parity enclosed by this string. So that's the property of this wave function. If you forget about the fermions, it's exactly the wave function of a toric code Hamiltonian. Uh, uh, in fact, the two constraints here looks very like the Torico, except that now you entangle uh, the Plaquet term of Torico with the fermion parity term. Uh, so you can think as a free fermions coupled with the Z2 lattice gauge theory. 
So in fact, you start with a free framing state, uh, which has, has is no intrinsic topological order and trivial, but you can produce this long range entangled state with uh, this coupling, with this gauging process. So now we can further apply a duality map such that to integrate all the Fermi ionic degree freedom that you only preserve the spins on the edge uh, and then they are represented by this uh, uh, different uh, type of notation of this uh, poly operators. Uh, instead of sigma, you use X and Z. So the mapping is that you map the sigma Z into Z uh, and you ma mapping the par Fermi parity term into uh, placate Z terms and the Fermi hopping terms uh, coupled to the uh, gauge spin is uh, mapping to uh, X times Z. Uh, so you can actually uh, understand why uh, there, uh, so plus there's a, a flux operator which imposed a zero flux constraint. They are mapped uh, to a product of four X times four Z. Um, which you can understand uh, in a simple case that uh, you consider fermion, fermionic insulator, there is no hopping terms, uh, only fermion parity term. Then you just exactly produce the toric code, which is actually uh, a Z2F gauge theory. It's a toric code because you only have the plaquet term and this weird flux operator, but you can multiply them together to cancel this Z part, so you get the same stabilizer group. Um, but uh, um, but uh, with uh, additional hopping term, you can turn it into other type of chiral spin uh, liquid. So now we, we could understand why this um, hopping term look like, uh, like this X times Z, because in um, Tory code, you could uh, create fermions, uh, a pair of fermions by apply X and Z. Uh, so because X create a pair of M and Z creates a pair of E. And M and E combined, it has fermionic statistic. So you can apply a string of X, Z, then effectively you just uh, make the fermion hop to different sides. So in the spin models, uh, you don't have a real fermion, but you have emergent fermions uh, out of uh, the as excitation of this model. So that's the, the, the full procedure of the mapping. We first do a, a gauging process, and then we integrate out fermions, which itself can be understand that the two steps can be combined as a bosonization process that map of pure fermion theory, free fermion theory to an interacting spin theory. And this is a trivial, and but this one has long range entanglement. Uh, and the Hamiltonian of the chiral spin liquid just uh, look, has all these new Pauli operators. Uh, and uh, uh, so they are pure spin models. You can forgo all details. And it has this uh, uh, flux uh, constraint. Uh, OK, so now we can produce the Kitaev's uh, 16 fold way classification. Uh, by putting mu number of copies of P plus IP superconductor. Actually, this mu is equal to the uh, uh, spectral tune number. Uh, so, uh, and the topological spin of the ver vortex excitation, which violates those um, flux constraint term, uh, has a topological spin equals to uh, exponential IP mu over eight. So, so, so that's why they have a 16 different class. Um, uh, and there's some simple example, if you mu equals zero, it's, uh, you have a fermionic insulator, or you could consider an S-wave superconductor. When you gauge it, you just get a usual toric code, which is non-chiral. But if you have a single copy, you get IC and TQFT. You have two copies, you have some Laughlin uh, fractional quantum Hall state, one uh, a quarter filling, and a mu equals three gives you the more read states. So you ha have a whole class of uh, states constructing this way. So now, can we find a scale invariant entangled rising circuit to uh, such that it's chiral spin liquids are the fixed point wave functions? So uh, actually, we already have that. So the miracle circuit is equal to this quasi-local evolution circuit we apply to the P plus IP superconductor and this torical mirror circuit applied to the Z2 lattice gauge theory, which is equivalent to the torical. So you apply these two type of circuits then you can create an entangled realization. So it looks something like this. You first apply the, this uh, quasi-local evolution, which e effectively forbid uh, the emergent fermion to occupy these plaquettes. They cannot go to these plaquettes. And then you apply uh, the, those C-naughts 
to disentangle uh, all these qubits uh, on the blue plaquettes in, into plus or zero state. Uh, so it's just a, a single step of mirror in X direction just look like this. And you can apply it to different directions and the different scales. So now we just have the construction. So finally, uh, we can um, have some new understanding of the quantum complexity of the many body states. Um, so, so we noticed that the conventional definition of quantum state, uh, circuit state complexity needs some refinement. So if we only uh, consider state progression complexity with strictly local gates, then this 16-fold weight chiral spin liquid is likely not in this uh, uh, category. So because of the correlation lens no good argument. But if we add this quasi-local evolution circuit, you can prepare such state. Uh, and also, uh, with this uh, classification, the P plus IP superconductor is just trivial. Uh, but with the old classification, they are non-trivial, which is a bit uh, uh, kind of strange. And the chiral topological order is instead non-trivial. So we also kind of know that because this class is strictly uh, uh, smaller than this class, we know that the chiral topological order is likely more complex than the non-chiral topological order. I think likely is that we, we only have a no-go argument, but not a no-go theorem. But if you prove that, then you can prove this is exact. Uh, so the chiral topological order and the corresponding mirror circuits can be also maybe viewed as different types of resources. Uh, so finally, this is our conclusion. We construct entangled rising circuits for, uh, okay. Um, yeah, for the chiral spin liquids, um, and the, yeah, so when equipped with quasi-local quasi interactions, miracle circuits are more powerful than mirror circuits, and uh, it helps to circumvent the no-go argument. Okay, so that's the end of my talk, so thank you. So. Okay, uh, due to the time constraint, we could have one question. Okay. Hi, uh, thanks. So uh, you mentioned you have to use this, um, these interactions that decay with the, the polynomial in the... Uh, yeah, the simple polynomial. Yeah, yeah, so, but are you in the regime where there's no Lee Robinson bound? Or, like, is it, is it important that you're in the regime where there's no Lee Robinson bound? Or do you still have Lee Robinson bound? Because this depends on the alpha, no? Whether there's like Lee Robinson or not. So, uh, so how quasi-local is this? Like, do you have Lee Robinson or not? Do you have the Lee Robinson? Because yeah. uh, this depends on the alpha, no? On if, if alpha is one, for instance, you don't have Lee Robinson bound. Uh -huh. so. so I haven't considered much about Lee Robinson bound in the quasi-local evolution, but uh, maybe it has also been studied. Mm -hmm. So there are some sort of a locality as well. I, I think there are some papers study that, but yeah. uh, I'm not too familiar with this direction. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's thank uh, Guan Yu again.